All right, and we are back with the today's mid-season showdown top card. We are we are still in the top eight since previously we did show you a top four game, but that was the other side of the bracket. Mm -hmm. So continuing in this side of the bracket, we previously saw Jirawi Wat triumph over Harold Koo, mm. and now he'll be playing the winner of. The, show, the match we're about to see, which will be Brian Wong against Kenny Lee. Mm. Kenny took the advantage, uh, won and managed to proceed on to the semi-finals here. Um, no, he did not. He haven't played yet. What? No. Ignore, ignore my commentator for I now. I am very confused Brian right is now. about to play Kenny. They actually played yesterday oh, in Swiss. Okay, so this and is still the quarterfinals. <laughs> <laughs> and Kenny w did win in Swiss, and so he should have a good idea. Both players should have a good idea of what each other is carrying. Though it should be pointed out that Kenny actually spent the whole of last night stressing out over Brian's team, only to discover in the morning that the team he thought was Brian's team was not Brian's team after all. So whether or not he's shaken off that uh, mistaken uh, mindset and it's going on strong for his match now remains to be seen. It's okay Kenny, I, I understand how you feel to be as confused as you. But it doesn't matter, as long as you get many to win these two rounds, you'll be able to proceed on to fight Jirawa. Okay, so Kenny is running a Cybertron team? I, even if you were to call it a Cybertron thing, it wasn't Cybertron to begin with. He did, um, well, he did get it from Poker Alex, Alex Gomez. Mm -hmm. So, it was, and Kenny has made his own changes. We've often uh, joked, whole of last year especially, that Kenny just can't play without Kangaskhan. And that kind of pans out today as well. Mm. His opponent, Brian Wong, well, is the one player packing the Giratina origin form. It will be teamed with the Xerneas, Ferriton, Flame, Smeargle, and Salamence. And Kenny with the Groudon, Bronzong, Salamence, Kangaskhan, Smeargle, and Kyogre. Yes, Kenny opting for the Kangaskhan over the Mawal that it was run on the original build of the team. And it's interesting to see the Smeargle mirror match. It should be pointed out that the original build of that uh, Alex Gomez team did have Crafty Shield Smeargle. Hmm. Whether or not Kenny has adopted the same variant here remains to be seen. It will do very well against Brian Smeargle if it is a standard Dark Void spamming smear girl. Brian also have the option of the very standard uh, smear zern lead which Kenny does not have since he does not have the zern on his team. But Kenny does have the bronzong mm. which loves facing smear girls and is assuming of course it is Lumberry. Yeah on that note though Brian does have the one of the things that bronzong fears the gira O which I believe will be able to KO it with the shadow force. But, but I suppose in Kenny's favour is the fact that no matter what Giratina O does it's still not one kill on bronzong because shadow force takes two turns. Yes, that Barring is true. And, and Jeditania O cannot hold a power herb because it of course is locked into the, the Grisius Orb. Orb. Hmm. Very, a lot of similar Pokemon, yeah, uh, aside from the Smeagol Mirror, the, the Salamence Mirror also coming to play here. Uh, although I'm not sure Brian wants to bring in his Ferrothorn or against the Groudon. Kenny of course bringing Salamence in will also be very dangerous. Hmm. In fact, both of Kenny's Megas are kind of don't enjoy fighting against the Giratina O. Salamence kind of needs to land a Draco Meteor, which might not even KO, actually. Alright, we see a Talonflame Smeargle lead actually from Brian here. Brian, I think, trying to force through the Dark Void with uh, Talonflame protecting the Smeargle from quick, uh, from uh, priority moves such as Fake Out, but he kind of lacks offense, especially after this Intimidate. Yeah, I, I say Kenny definitely has an advantage here since the Intimidate is fired off on the Talonflame. The other question, of course, is are either of them running Scarf Smeargle? Yeah, or both could be running Scarf Smeargle. But if Kenny is running Scarf Smeargle, the Smeargle is now safe. Because after Intimidate, Talonflame cannot one kill with Brave. And we see Brian re retreating his Talonflame, sending his mans as well. Uh, Dangerous play there. He really needs to hope that Kenny didn't Draco Meteor that slot. Or I suppose the original build of the team did not have Draco Meteor on Salamans. Mm, uh, we you see the Mega Evolution for the Mega Mans there. It, I think the key factor for this first match is what the Smeargles will do. Yes. Are we going to see Crafty Shield from either Smeargle? Mm. We and do see Smeargle. Kenny Smeargle goes for Fake Out onto the Talonflame slot as Brian Smeagol does reveal Crafty Shield and I think Kenny knows that. Mm. Kenny now walking into the Crafty Shield with his own Dark Void as Double Edge will go into the Salamence doing more, a lot of damage to the non-Mega Salamence even after the Intimidate. Yeah, um, definitely something that Kenny definitely punished over there. Um, even and now, Brian is forced to protect Salamence because there is no speed tie when only one Salamence is Mega. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I guess Kenny kind of played safe with that. Uh, or maybe he was really bored to let the Smeargle, let Brian Smeargle do as he please. With, just instead going for the fake out. Does that mean, is there any indication of any items like Sash or the Scarf on either of these Smeargles? No, because both of them use moves in different priority brackets. Mm. Fake out is plus. Actually, I think they are in the same bracket, aren't they? Fake out is plus 3 and so is Crafty Shield. 
So, so either that means Kenny's either Kenny Smigel is want to speed die or Kenny Smigel is scarf. In which case, he is locked into fake out. Yeah, I, I mean, it'll be a very telling sign if it is scarf. So Kenny will have to switch out here or yes. risk, you know, showing that he has to fake out again. Actually, both are kind of an indication that he's scarf. <laughs> but I suppose switching out is, uh, yeah, Kenny does switch Smigel out. I think it is kind of indicating that he is scarf. Bronzon will come in, who does not care about anything on the field right now. I guess it just is free for Bryant's if his is not Scarf to fire off a Dark Void, possibly? Yes, definitely. And Kenny kind of has the Hyper Voice here. Yes, Sunam is forced to protect from Brian's side, not wanting to lose it for free. Mm -hmm. But Kenny is free to Hyper Voice. Oh, but Smiggle goes for the Spiky Shield, Shield actually. a very defensive play from Brian. I'm beginning to think that Double Edge into the Sunam slot. So Kenny actually not Hyper Voicing there. I'm, I'm kind of confused by that as well. I, I don't know. That was a very... That was a turn wasted for Brian, I felt. The, the Smiggle was going to switch out or... The Dark Void, I mean, if he knows that he's sash, he could take a double edge very comfortably and Dark Void to get some momentum on his uh, on his side yes. of the field. And Brian? He does. And actually, now that, now, that you mentioned, now that Tony has actually mentioned it, Brian actually went for a ridiculously risky play there. Crafty Shield followed by Spiky Shield means that Spiky Shield, like Protect, operates at only 33.33% chance of succeeding. <laughs> but he got it. But it didn't matter since Kenny didn't even target into it. Mm -hmm. But given that Kenny's obvious play was a Hyper Voice, Brian with a very, very strange play there. And now the Smilgo going for the follow but again, me. Kenny can just Hyper Voice. Yeah. Does Kenny not carry Hyper Voice? And Kenny does and Hyper can... Voice. If Sunamans is naive on Brian's side, it's going down. As it does. So Brian again wasting a turn. He's not going for the Dark Void, which he really has a chance to, and will lose Smeagol for free. Not really, and I think the Sash. not done any oh, damage yeah. to Kenny. <laughs> oh, Brian actually revealing that Smeagol is the slow Smeagol, oh. based on the viral ball damage there. Hmm. So the slow, funny because that build of that particular Smeagol set was usually run on Kenny's team. The slow Smeagol with Crafty Shield operate under but, but instead, Kenny opting to run for the Scarf, a very stark difference over there. But Brian losing his Mega, definitely not in a very good position here. Not just that, all Kenny's that all the only damage Kenny has received is by to himself. Oh, and the Jira O comes into play here, threatening the <coughs> big KO, considering it takes one more turn to it charge the one force. KO on Salamence though with Draco Meteor. Oh, that is tr true, but isn't Mens faster? Salamence, unless Salamence carries Draco Meteor, which even if it does, look at the Giratina's HP. I think it's a bulky Giratina. Which will take a Draco Meteor quite comfortably. Uh, but the Smiggle is free to follow me away, the Draco Meteor. Yeah, that's true. So Sunmets is just going to hypervise anyway. And Giratina, is it going to vanish away? But if he vanishes away, he just gives Bronzong a free trick room. And then Bronzong switches out. <laughs> and then Shadow Force goes into whatever Kenny brings in. Uh, or if Kenny brings in the Smiggle to take in the Shadow Force, exactly. it's a very cheeky play. <laughs> Uh, Smeagol does go for the follow me. I think Kenny will hyper voice to pick up the Smeagol and get some chip on the Giratina. Mm -hmm. And yeah, oh, he goes, oh, goes double a double edge actually. Huh. Goes into the Smeagol, picks it off. Well, he might have wanted to hyper voice there. As Giratina, well, Draco Meteor? Goes for Willow oh, Wisp into the Salamence. I'm not sure that's a very good play considering. But now that, but I think now Brian is, knows for sure that there is no Draco Meteor threat. So double edge is the biggest threat to his Giratina. And Giratina, I believe, is very, very slow. Yes. <laughs> I think that is a sure sign that is a bulky Giratina. So even if Kenny had Draco Meteor, I don't think he can one KO. Although now Brian down to his last two Pokemon. It's not a bad last two though. Mm -hmm. Hidden Flame at the back. Fresh, no Intimidate. Salamence in Danger Zone. It's a very nice position I, for I guess what Brian, Brian has to worry about is the speed at which he can take the KOs. Even if Jira hits hard with the Shadow Force, it is going to take two turns in which Talon Flame is open for attack. But see, once Salamence goes down, Kenny's down to only one primary attacker. Bronzong is doing absolute pittance to both of these two Pokemon on the field. You could even argue that the Mance is not really threatening right here because it's been burnt. Maybe the hype only reduced to the Hyper Voice. Do I suppose the other problem, and Smeagol comes in, it just gets taken straight up by Brave Bird. Mm -hmm. And the Brave Bird should land onto the Mance over here. Will it take, take, take the KO? Should not, but oh, he does he with the critical, the critical hit. hit. Kenny not getting the rub of the draw there. Sometimes we will take Recoil and Life Orb uh, Recoil as well. As Giratina will disappear. So, Kenny knows for sure which slot is going into because now that there's only one mod on the field, it's only one slot that can be Oh, but Trick yet. Room is set up on uh, this side. Although, shouldn't really matter much since Tidal Flame does pack the priority Brave uh, Bird. Kenny has a very easy play here. He brings in his Primal, which is Groudon, switches Bronzong into Smeagol to take the Shadow Force, and Groudon gets a free hit on both. Oh, Groudon doesn't get a free hit because Giratina has disappeared. That, that is true. And 
what what moves? It definitely can't press Pursuit Blaze to hit the Titan Flame there. A Rock Slide or a Fire Punch? Of course, Kenny can stay in and Gravity. That's the other option he has. He mm. wants to sack the Bronzong. Or if he thinks that yeah, Shadow Force from Bulky Giratina, my Bronzong can take that. Does Kenny he has those? options here, definitely. I, I'm, more, I'm interested in what Brian can do to try to turn this match around because Honestly, both of these are just down to their last right two Pokemon. Now, however, has Flabliss under the sun to KO the Bronzor. Mm, but that doesn't have priority, so Trick Room definitely in. But Tenorflame not that, that doesn't have that much to fear. But I suppose Eruption here will take out Tenorflame anyway. Or Rock Slide uh, from Groudon. Yeah, not we sure what. Chinese moveset yet. Kenny has options here, definitely. Gravity is an option. He has switched to Smigle. No switches. No Tenorflame per gets the break, either. but into Groudon. So Bronzong is going to be eating the Shadow Force. As Groudon takes forty uh, percent, that very comfortably, and we'll get the attack off on the Talon Flame. A rock slide. Oh, Bronzong, Bronzong goes, goes for the gravity. gravity. So Precipitate Blade Bronzong should be coming in out. for the gravity. And Groudon will fire off. Actually, will Giratina move first? No, Groudon goes first. Precipitate Blades into the Talon Flame. Will KO, and it will be Giratina O against the world. Mm -hmm. So, I believe you're a big fan of Giratina Origin form. Yes. Do you think he can pull it out here? Um, I really don't think so because it is Shadow a Force 2 versus 1 matchup. Animation. Yes. We'll go into the Bronzong. Can he KO? Oh, no, he it does not. not. Oh. Yes, Giratina's bulk and lack of uh, offense really hurting it there. Ah. Uh. Worst, worst part for Giratina, it can't even waste the Groudon. Mm. Indeed. And now threatening with the Precipitate Blades. And uh, Levitate no longer in play because of gravity. Yes. Uh. Giran not looking very good, and especially the number of turns it takes to KO, uh, to, to even do damage Two as turns. well. Two yeah. turns per attack. It is open to attack right here, and... Well, I guess the only way Kenny can take advantage of the turns is with Bronzong Shenanigans. Bronzong will get a free Gyro Ball, mm -hmm. plus those things on the field, to pick up a bit of damage, and Pressy Blades will go into the Giratina, single target, with the increase. Neutral. Yeah. Increased accuracy. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Oh, but Jira goes for the Earth Power here on the Groudon. And now Giratina will get KO'd by... Oh, that is... Does not even take out the Groudon. Ooh. Earth Power 90... Hmm. Earth Power Shadow Force. Will always... Do you think he carries Protect or do you think he carries a Dragon Attack? I would actually say... I don't Giratina know. Giratina can't trigger him, right? No, it cannot. I, uh, it can? Oh, Zong Yi has... Uh, you know, being the bronze has told me that uh, Jira can as well do the trick room, but I don't. I highly doubt it has. I know I he has still in, yeah. So I, I don't has know. a lot of options there for the last slot. Yeah, so he really can't. Pro uh, really doesn't want to sacrifice it for the protect. I would say that uh, Pillow Wiz is already a very shaky move on Jira since that you don't really doesn't help you much against the uh, Kyogre. Uh, I suppose Groudon matchup. You can abuse it under gravity, though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that, that is true, but you can't really whiff the Groudon and. That's something that you want to be able to do because with the levitate, especially, you can take the Groudon on one on one. Mm. Without Precipice Blaze, Giratina always has nothing to fear mm. on the Groudon. So maybe Brian wants to consider taking out the Bronzong since it is one of the key uh, leech pins to Kenny being able to fight against his Giratina. But his best option, as we saw, was the Giratina, -o, which could not KO the Bronzong with a single hit. I, I don't know if he's invested enough attack in the thing. I, I don't think he's invested any attack. As we saw, it's mixed. So it's probably a negative speed nature, in fact. That's why Gy Gyro Ball is doing so little damage. Uh, he has a special attack and attack. A mixed Giratina, probably a bulky Giratina. Probably a strong pick that carried him through Swiss yesterday, but against Kenny's team, he's going to suffer. Mm. Especially since Kenny's, I believe, Groudon is bulky as well. Yes. Uh, to operate under the trick rule. Hmm. As we saw of power, not even a barely a 3 hit KO on Groudon. I would as, was, say, as was Brave Bird. I would say it would be a 3 hit KO, but it would, there will be a damage rule involved in there somewhere. But that's not something that Brian wants. Especially since th th he doesn't want... He has to prioritize getting rid of the Bronze off. And that wasn't even an Oko, which I think was the more crucial dam uh, damage calculation there. See, if, Brian's, if Brian wants to prioritize the Bronze off, though, then I think he, he needs to take a totally different approach. If he can bring down the Bronze off, then let's get Xerneas going. If Bronzong goes down, Zenith runs all the way through Kenny's But team. if you look at it, the only way for him to bring down the Bronzong would be maybe the Jira, which is unfortunately all his... Yeah, and it's also his way to deal with the Groudon on Kenny's side. So if he loses it, then Bronzong and Groudon are free to reign. But Brian will go with the Smeagol Talonflame once again. And Kenny will go for the Kangaskhan and the Kyogre. So Kenny's switching things up. Switching his primal. Maybe going for a fast mode this time. I think Kenny wisely not... Bringing the Smilgo here after showing that it is, you know, possibly scarfed. 
But so, in doing so, he now opens his Mirko up for the easy KO from Kangaskhan. Which in turn will allow Kyogre to pick off the Talon Flame. Mm -hmm. And if Kyogre is max speed, then Kyogre doesn't even care about the Smeagol anyway. Hmm, I'm not sure... Yeah, we don't know what Kenny is running on his Kyogre. Yeah, Nor do we know whether Brian really is the slow Smeagol. And Kenny does have the really overwhelming offensive pressure here. Talon Flame being very frail. Could be, could be killed right here. But that's fake out and the fake out pressure being on Kenny's side as well. I think Kenny just, why not just go for double action to the Smeagol slot. Really? Why not the fake out? Because if he goes, if Smeagol fakes out the Kangaskhan, then Kangaskhan doesn't move. But while Spot goes off, kills Terry Flame, makes Smeagol down to Sash. Mm. If Smeagol fakes out uh, Kyogre, then, then Kangaskhan just brings down the Smeagol straight off. Mm. Well, I it's suppose it depends on whether Kenny is running fast or slow Kyogre. I, I don't know, because from my point of view, having a Smeagol and a Terry Flame, both of them very frail Pokemon. A very just a misplay on Bryce could cost him very, uh, and, very and dearly. The other important point is that I don't think Kenny wants to fake out into a quick guard. Mm, okay, that is that is something that I did not consider. True. Or oh, a spiky shield for that matter. But on that note, you know, if if Brian goes for those moves, he just leaves himself open to being swept by. Sentiments will come in for the intimidate, but it will not save the Smeagol from a double edge if it is going in there. Actually, if it's a double target anyway, <laughs> Smeagol is going down. Mm, and Kangaskhan Mega Evolves. I kind of feel that the, the Mance is the best switch in here because of an expected water spout. Yes, the Intimidate and the uh, Water Resist are very good switch in here. If you have to switch. So we're going to go for Spiky Shield. So Kangaskhan probably going to be taking some damage from the Spiky Shield. Unless he went for the Fake Out on the Mance here. Which he which did, does. my goodness. <laughs> Justin calling all the plays today. <laughs> Kenny making all the plays today as well. <laughs> and Kaga will get a free Origin Pulse. Yeah, yep. he does. He lands on the Sun Man's. It has resist, but it's not Mega yet. So a bit less defense than it could have. And we'll go all the way down to 8 HP. Yeah, that wasn't even a crit. And yeah, Kenny definitely punishing uh, Brian's switch ins here. Uh, the other problem for Brian, of course, is that since Sun is fresh, it is currently a speed type within both Megas. One of which is not yet a Mega. Yeah, and. Uh, I and a Sucker Punch should bring down Sun just like that. Well, Smeagol definitely. Oh, he leaves Smeagol alone. And Smeagol is sashed. So. Hmm. Kenny definitely has to think about it. So, definitely a better position for Brian than it was previously. Since Kenny now actually has to think about what he wants. I don't think he's feeling that way since he's looking at the AHP elements. But if just he can see that, better. Yeah. Just a bit better. If he can see past the. So, he goes for follow, follow me, me to eat the Kangaskhan's attack, which will probably be the double edge. Yep. Or well, sometimes actually wins the speed tie though. Not the water spout. But as we saw, Kenny runs Origin Pulse. And sometimes kills itself. So, follow me. What on earth was it? Follow me. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I, oh, thought I, was, I suppose if he, had, if he had lost the speed die. Oh, but it goes for the low kick, not even the double edge. Doesn't even want to take the recoil. <laughs> yep. Any. So Brian, if Brian at least at least getting double edge off. Though Smeagol wasted a turn there. Yeah, going but for the following me, which was going, which was an attack that was going for it anyway. But things definitely in um, Kenny's favor here. He has not, he has not switched out even. And Brian is down to his last two Pokemon already so fast in this set of in this match. Actually, that's the problem Brian had with his low health Salamence last turn. Kangaskhan could actually just target it with low kick. Because low kick would have brought down Salamence anyway. Even if it didn't Mega Evolve. Yes. Well, Jira does come in, although it does not face the both <laughs> doesn't face the ground that it wants that but it wants to be in facing. Brian's favor now is the fact that Diamond Fling will KO the Kyogre. Hmm. And Kangaskhan is intimidated. Can't really and touch the Jira as well. Probably so. going to be burnt as well. Hmm. So Kangaskhan just going for Diamond Flame here, but Diamond Flame is forced to attack. Diamond Flame cannot attack here because he cannot let Kyogre get a free attack. Does can he read that and maybe protect his Kyogre? Let his Kangaskhan get off free damage on the Talon Flame? I don't believe uh, Jira will be able to take off the Kangaskhan on this field. I don't think Kenny wants to play overly safe, honestly. He has the advantage. <laughs> Kyogre has kind of done his job. I'm sure he has better options at the back. Actually, I feel, I feel he can. He's, he's in the lead right now. And well, Kenny does <laughs> go for the protect. Is the Brave Bird going into that slot? It does. Brian playing way too safe there. Will eat the double edge for his trouble. After the Intimidate, it's going to be a close call. It's going to be a close call. Yes. Does get a luck of the roll with the damage roll. Tanaflim hangs on, but will kill itself. What does Jira go? Goes for the whiz here. Probably his only real option to hurt Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan now totally neutered, but Tanaflim will die to anything. Die to his own recoil. Kangaskhan effect. can't touch Jiratana anyway. Kangaskhan does not care about that burn. Mm -hmm. Kangaskhan is just going to sit there and press Sucker Punch until he dies. Yeah, I, I mean, the Talon Flame looks ready to just take itself out with his own recoil. I mean, Kenny might just switch something in. Since the Bronze Tongue in to let Talon Flame kill itself against the Bronze <laughs> to let in to add insult to injury. Um, yeah, it's definitely some. The match is definitely in. Barring Kenny's a roost from Talon Flame at this point, I don't see Brian 
Oh, it's gonna be Jira O against the wall again. And yes, Kenny, Kenny is gonna switch. Just withdraw. You you called it. Yep. Kenny goes for the switch. I believe it is into the Bronzong. Based on the sounds, I'm not entirely sure. We have lost our <laughs> video signal. It is a Bronzong. It is the Bronzong. Bronzong. So Bronzong will take the Brave Bird quite comfortably. Yeah, I'm just waiting to hear the sound of Talonflame fainting. <laughs> Should die to his own life or recoil. Yeah, which he did. And Will Wisp goes into a bronze on here. Jaratina not wanting to get sucker punched. Mm. It's forced into the Will Wisp. But now it's kind of. If, the longer it's forced to Will Wisp, I don't, it actually might lose a 1v1 <laughs> to the Gyro Ball, despite its high health. Not only that, Kenny still has Primal Kyogre at the back and, you know, whatever. Primal Groudon as well. Yeah, and. No spread moves on Gira means he can't really take a 2 versus 1. G Gira really excels and really wants the 1v1 matchup. Yes, Gira can win almost anything 1v1. Except Xenius. No one yeah. wants to fight Xenius 1v1. No yeah. one. Yeah. Absolutely no one. Yeah, Unless yeah. you're Bronzong. Bronzong in beats all. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean... Uh, Brian is just trapped. Talon is still being showed to be alive there, but Talon that's already gone down. Yeah. Um, can he look sad to take this match actually? Giratina is locked in the wheel of wisp. Or he can, yeah, either has to take Sucker Punch or, or I suppose. Yeah. At least if it's Shadow Forces, he only eats one Sucker Punch per attack. Mm -hmm. But that, that, what, what am I saying? That is what you typically take anyway. Uh, at this point, Kenny doesn't have his uh, strong attackers on the field, so all he can really hope to do is just whittle down the gear up. He can, of course, his... yeah, the thing about Shadow Force is that he takes himself off the field, and every turn, off, every turn he wastes is a turn of burn damage. So at least he has that. Kenny doesn't even want to give him that. Sends Kangaskhan out for the Kyogre. Mm -hmm. Wanted to finish this game quickly. Kenny, not a big fan of playing this fool, it appears. <laughs> As you have a Will of Wisp into the Kyogre, will miss. As Bronzong gets gravity, one turn after Will of Wisp missed. Oh, okay. Well, well skillful well, now will play there. Hit. Don't worry, Brian. You can hit a Will of Wisp now. Skillful play. Skillful play there. And Brian can get the KO on Bronzong now with the Earth Power. Hmm. Yeah, that is true since the gravity went up. But if he does, then he opens himself to the Ice Beam from the Kyogre. Hmm. Which is coming anyway, since Kyogre is definitely faster than Giratina. So... This game slowly drawing to a close, and Brian's out there might have been the will of waste on the Kyogre and hope to With Shadow them, Force, yeah. yeah, Shadow Force, and bring both Pokemon down to their burn damage. Yeah, I mean, even after all that, Kenny still has one more unknown Pokemon at the back. Which Bronzong does retreat. This is Kanga's Sky, I believe. No, it's Groudon. Groudon. Groudon will review itself and will take Kyogre's rain away, which he wasn't going to use anyway. Mm -hmm. Kenny wanted to finish this game with a Brassivit Blade. But a strange switch there because Brian is definitely sending Earth Power into that slot. Hmm. Maybe he didn't know that and... He would. He I, would. I have he no idea. We, we have to see how this plays out. We have to I see how will definitely go into Giratina O. Who should survive Which and not, not be frozen, frozen in, the, in the sun as well. So what does Jira go for? The Earth Power? That does even even power. if it does, I think even the ground... Oh, but he goes on the ground Kyogre. Kyogre. It's not gonna KO. Kyogre special defense, oh my goodness. That was not even 10%. That was barely 10%. Even, I mean, if we saw earlier, the, the ground on Earth Power couldn't KO. Like, yeah, it was barely a 3 KO Yes. So Kenny, knowing his cocks as well, felt safe to bring in the... Then, I don't understand why Brian didn't Shadow Force there. Did he, thought, did he think Kyogre was switching out for Groudon maybe? Hmm. Well, either way... Yeah, I suppose I he had to make big plays at this point. And Shadow Force comes into play, but this is only delaying the inevitable. Gira is going to fall to almost anything. And Groudon... Especially since Ky Groudon reveals the substitute, it's going to be safe even if Shadow Force goes to the thing. Shadow Force breaks Protect, it does not go through subs. Very well played here by Kenny, although maybe revealing an unnecessary move here. I see into the disappeared uh, Giratina. Got his Blaze into the disappeared Giratina. And Shadow Force, you at least pick up a KO on a Kyogre? Yep, mm -hmm. does pick up the Kyogre. And so P Blades under gravity will not miss, should pick up, will pick yet, up the yet, KO. Not yet. Really? Giratina's the slowest thing on the view. He went last. Oh. Well. Bronzong hits the field then, but no, it's, I mean, uh, what what can Brian do? Yeah, what Brian, Brian chooses to forfeit at this point, recognizing there's no way back for him. And Kenny will move on to a match against Jira Wiwan. As predicted. <laughs> or, you know, preempted, sorry. <laughs> My commentator Justin here showing Brian Wong no respect whatsoever. <laughs> I I I honestly I want the G I want the Jira to win, man. I want I want Jira O to win. Ah, it's such a shame. It's such a shame, though, yeah. especially.
Uh, so very cautious is Kenny who move on to a, a match that were, they were about to start quite quickly after this against Jurawi Wat. Would be going is, on an interview? Uh, I'm not sure whether we will be interviewing Kenny as well or whether we'll be moving straight to the game between Jurawi Wat and Kenny. Yeah. Kenny's team definitely showing the advantage and really forcing Xerneas off the board for Brian. Brian mm -hmm. could not bring Xerneas into a Bronzong Groudon matchup and it really showed. He only had Giratina to fight, especially since when you look at Brian's team, his offense is generated by his restricted Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Helen Flame, Smeargle, Ferraton, they're not picking up KOs on their own, barring of course effective hits. Yeah, I think Xerneas was one of the biggest ways he could have um, punched through Kenny, Kenny's team. But, but the Bronzong yeah. just locked it down. Yes. And Bronzong Giratina, proving to be a very good pick here for Kenny. Yeah. Giratina maybe could have come in earlier, because he really didn't have the end game with Giratina he but, needed. But I mean, even then, you look, the Shadow Force couldn't even one hit KO the Bronzong, which is not something that I expect from a Jira, who should be investing max attack and should be able to take down the Bronzong. That was clearly a very defensive Giratina. It looked like it was specially defensive to take. Actually, even special defense, I wonder. Ice Beam was a 2 hit KO there. So, presumably, it's maybe, I, I would I, think Eevee to survive Salamence Draco Meteor at least. Or maybe he's pumped his um, damage into special, but I mean, the damage no, or the power. power. Yeah, not with that. Uh, I, I, yeah. Uh. So, an interesting spread from Brian. It definitely carried him through Swiss, so definitely an interesting team there. Congratulations to him for making it this far. And definitely would like to see what else he's got in the future. <laughs> with a team like that, especially. And we'll be bringing Kenny on for an interview before his match with Jirawi Wat. So, once he recovers from his caffeine induced stupor, <laughs> he will be coming onto the camera for an interview. Alright, and we are back with the winner of the previous top 8 match, Kenny Lee, who triumphed over Brian Wong. So congratulations, Kenny. Thanks. How do you feel finally beating a team which you spent all night stressing over and it turned out to be a different team? Huh. Uh, I'm not sure. So when you came here this morning and realised that what you thought was you were going to play against was not what you were playing against, how do you change your game plan in the short time you had before the match started? Um, I'm quite confident with that, that, that team I play with. Yeah, so I just think of some strategy to play with it. So do you, were you pretty sure that you wouldn't see Xerneas in that matchup because the Bronzong shut down Xerneas? Or do you expect to see Xerneas at some point in the um, uh, Because um, in, in my back I have Bronzong and Gaudron to counter it. So I still have a chance if we lead with Xerneas somehow. So actually Bronzong having a, being, a, having, being a very strong play against his team. Yeah. Since Gira, as we saw Giratino O, even with Shadow Force, couldn't want to kill your Bronzong. Did, did, you, did you already know that from yesterday? Did you see the damage count already? Uh, or was no. it the first time? So you actually you didn't know whether you would get one kill, is yeah, it? I didn't know. But once you saw that you couldn't get one kill, your Bronzong was really untouchable by anything on his team. So it's able to close out the game. So well done, well played. You did you didn't really need to do any sort of uh, speed control there because you just had a very strong defensive matchup against his team. Uh, because all he had really was Talon Flame to do damage and your team just didn't take that much damage from Talon Flame. And he couldn't bring Xerneas. So well played Kenny. Yeah, thanks. So what did you, did you know what Giratina O could do is full set from yesterday? Or were you actually learning as you went just now? Yeah, also le learning when. Yes. So, were you actually expecting anything dangerous from the Giratina? Were you afraid Dragon, of any Dragon Pulse on, Dragon Pulse Pulse on Salamence? Yeah. So, you were actually afraid of that hit? Yeah. Like. Especially since I believe our men's. Uh, I suppose you didn't ask about your men's full set, but I believe it doesn't carry Dragon Meteor. Right? But even if it did, I think that, that Giratina was a especially bulky Giratina, so it wouldn't have made a difference. Yeah. Definitely a very strong pick there, especially since your leads were very strong. Like, I believe he let Talon Flame Smeagol at one point. Then he brought in Salamence, he intimidated the Talon Flame, then the Smeagol really couldn't do anything on the field. And uh, I suppose the other question is, regarding the Smeagol matchup, did both of you know each other's Smeagol items? Uh, yeah, we know our items, but we don't know the most set. So you, you knew that he had Crafty uh, but you didn't know he had Crafty Shield? I, I knew he had Crafty Shield. So he, he knew you were Scarf and he, you knew he had Crafty Shield? Yeah. Which is why, I think in game one, you actually went for the fake Scarf fake out. Yeah. So you caught him off guard, so very good play there. So Thanks. Again, good job Kenny. Good luck against Jirawi Wat. Yeah, thanks. Well, you're one of, two, last two helps, uh, one of our last hopes remaining for Singapore, so good luck Kenny. Thanks.
We'll be back with our top four game.